Hey, welcome back. Part uh, 5. Tutorial 14, part 5. It's become rather a long tutorial. Um, but there's a lot to do. So we're about to configure up um, Tutorial 14's Viata or VYOS machine. Um, I've taken the liberty of starting it, but rather than uh, hide behind video technology, I had some problems getting this thing started. And what I ended up having to do was just to show you here, I ended up having to change its network. So I'm gonna take you through the steps that I did for that. So first of all, I'm gonna power this thing off. So let's shut this thing down. Okay, so it's gone. Um, in here, it shows it's powered off. Um, you'll remember probably on the network config we had host only adapter VBOX net 0 and host only adapter VBOX net 1. And when I click OK, that's fine. There they go. So now if we go back in here and we go start, is it starting? Nope. nothing's happening so it's just not linking at all if i click start from here and i did want to show you this because you know these these sorts of gremlins occur from time to time and you you, you know you're left wondering as a, a systems person what on earth is going on why aren't i able to you know click start get things going do things so it's quickly booted, log in, show the interfaces. And let's just as a quick test, because we know, we can see it's running on host adapter VBoxNet 0. Is that going to get a connection to our router, which is already up here? So we can see our router's up. We know we configured this for 10.0.0.2. So why don't we just do a quick conf and do set... Uh, interface, uh, Ethernet, Eth0, address, uh, 10.0.0.1 slash 30. Let's commit that. Let's uh, run show interfaces. And we can see 10.0.0.1 is configured. Now we go ping 10.0.0.2. And we're getting nowhere. So it's not seeing this as a link from within GNS3. So if you have this error, you, you know what's going on now. Um, I'm going to just quickly delete. So this is how you delete an interface. It's that, whoops. It's that simple. I'm going to exit this and I'm going to do a power off. Whoops. Let's just show you that nothing's there. Yep. Yeah. Power off. And I want to make sure you get the most out of these videos. So let's just kill that. Okay. What I ended up doing to fix this error was um, first off, um, deleting the machine out of here. So delete. Yep. Then going into preferences and deleting it out of here. Then I want to add it again. But before I do that, I want to actually choose on the network side. I'm going to choose generic driver, UDP tunnel. And generic driver, UDP tunnel. Okay. So there's two UDP tunnels. Okay. Now we want to go in. Oops, not virtual box preferences. <laughs> Click on GNS. Um, we want to go into virtual box and we want to add a new machine. 14. Okay, and we want to edit it because again it's defaulted to this one adapter. And we want to up that to two adapters. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to add it again. 
change the little symbol for ourselves just so we know it's a router and link it it's got two adapters okay coming out of that mode for the links okay and it's still there with these adapters okay now we're going to if I pop that there and go to this machine oh I didn't want to do that did I we want to see this actually activate it sorry about this but it, it's well worth you seeing these sorts of little gremlins I'm going to start that machine. It's starting and it's running. It's config as well as kept those generic UDP tunnels. <coughs> so, in theory now, we should be able to configure our actual machine. I've lost my mouse again. No, it's come back. So here we go. Let's this time do the first interface. So we know this is 10.0.0.1. So um, set interface or interfaces. If you type eth and hit tab, it puts it in. Ethernet, eth0, address 10.0.0.1. And it's a 30 mask. Let's commit that. Now let's ping 10.0.0.2. And there we go. Excellent. So these two are now talking to each other. Lovely. So now we can configure the second interface, which is going to be set interface Ethernet ETH1 address. 192.168.1.1 and it's a 24 bit mask. We also want to set um, the what they call VIF address, virtual interfaces. Um, so we want to set uh, interface Ethernet ETH1. But this time we have a VIF2 for VLAN2. And its address is going to be 192.168.2.1 and a 24 bit mask. So this is like what we did on the Cisco. Um, we want to do a 3 network and it's VLAN3. Okay, so there's our 3 networks the native on the actual physical VLAN 2 on um, VIF 192.168.2.1 and VIF 3 for VLAN 3 on 192.168.3.1. So good. Uh, let's commit that. Let's do a save, might as well. Um, so we've done the 10. Now we want to set up our DHP, DHCP services on this actual interface. So we want to stay in config mode. We know we're in that because the root prompt hash. Um, we want to edit a service, uh, DHCP server shared network name. Um, why not? Let's call it MyNet. Um, and this subnet is going to be on 192.168.1.0 slash 24. So on the 192.168.1.0 network we're going to have MyNet. So now we do set its default router which is going to be 192.168.1.1 because we always have the routers on one. Um, just for completeness we're going to set a DNS server as uh, Google. Might as well, we're going to set the domain name, name as uh, tutorial14.local, just like we did on the Cisco. And this time, remember I said the other one had, the Cisco has exclusions. 
This one has inclusion, so we're going to set a start address of 192.168.1.101 and a stop of 192.168.1.254. Exit that and commit it. Lovely. Now we're going to need to do the same for the other two VLANs. So if I arrow up to this one, and change this to be the two network. Uh, well, I need to change the name first. So we call this app layer on the other one. Might as well stay with that for this. And this is on the 2.0. Arrow up again. We want to set its default router to. We want to set its DNS server would be the same. Uh, we want to set its domain name to the same and we want to set the start and stops. So this one is going to be two and two. Whoops, we want to exit and commit that. So that's VLAN two done. We want to do the same for VLAN 3. I'm going to type it this time because it gets a bit confusing, I'm sure, watching this as well when I'm arrowing up. So we're going to edit service DHCP. And you can see you've got several choices, but it's going to be a DHCP server. It's on a shared network name. This is going to be the DB layer. And the DB layer is going to be on subnet 192.168.3.0 slash 24. Okay. Its default router is going to be 192.168.8.3.1. That's where we're putting the default routers. Its DNS server, even though it hasn't got access to the internet, is going to be 8888. Um, its domain name is going to be uh, tutorial14.local and then we have the set start 192.168.3.101 and stopping at 192.168.3.254 I'm going to exit that and commit that. Right, so we've set up three um, virtual networks. Uh, sorry, two additional VLANs, VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. Um, in order to see this, we can do show, uh, if I remember rightly now, run show service DHCP. Whoops. Oh, it's just show service DHCP. So there they are, MyNet, DB layer, and app layer. So okay, so now, just like we did on the other one, we're gonna start this, we're gonna get its console up, just like we did for the Cisco. This is PC3, we're gonna do a show IP, no IP addresses, moment of truth, DHCP. Discover, discover, offer, yes, there we go, lovely, thank God. <laughs> I thought, are we going to have any more gremlins in this? And it's on VLAN too, which is exactly where we put it. So, let's do the same for this one, start, and it's console, I'm just giving it a second to start up there, they only take seconds, IP, DHCP, we want to see a 3 address on this one, a 3101. There it is, and a 3101. So there you go. So we've now set up the right and the left hand side. So uh, just to show, let's, let's ping between these two machines. Let's do a ping 192.168.2. Oops, this is the 23.101. Timeout, timeout, and then it should kick in. Ah, one timeout this time. There you go. So our trunking is working as well. 
You'll notice as well, we didn't actually type in any commands on here that actually included um, dot one q or anything like this, like we had to do on the Cisco. So there's differences. We had inclusions rather than exclusions, but the theory, the network theory is identical. Um, so that's both of those machines configured now. Um, DHCP is up and running. We've got our pinging between these machines. So now we want to set up some routing because at the moment, of course, if I go ping uh, 102, uh, 172.16.1.101, it's unreachable. How do I get to it? So we cannot go from here over to here. So how do we actually get to it? That's what we want to. That's what we want to figure out. You know. Um, in fact, actually, I should have done a two dot one on one. Yeah, just to be more clear, that's this is two dot one on one. So if I bring up PC one again, and its IP address is two one on one, and I go a ping one nine two dot one six eight dot um, two dot one on one, unreachable. Okay. So it doesn't know where to go. So we're going to have to set up default routes on these machines here. And we're going to have to set up, well, this is the whole purpose of this video, OSPF. We can have statics or we can have um, OSPF. Join me in part five. Cheers. Or part six it will be. Thank you.